How's it going, guys? We have a past little question for CardioFizz Step 1. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, mehl man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. Neonatal male born in 39 weeks gestation evaluated for potential cardiac defect. We have this schematic here. The NBME exam, the US simile, they love this type of diagram. Okay? And in fact, this diagram, I just screenshotted right from my cardio PDF. Okay, so if you've gone through my cardio PDF, it's right in there. I have a few of these for different cardiac defects because, as I just said, it's what the NBME likes. So let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, decrescendo holodiastolic murmur, aka early diastolic murmur. Wrong fucking answer. This would be aortic regurgitation. It could be pulmonic regurg in theory, but for most common murmurs that are going to present, aortic regurg, uh, you need to know that this can be loudest after S2. Most common cause of aortic regurg and U.S. simile is going to be aortic dissection, such as due to hypertension, cocaine, connective tissue disorders, marfan, ehlers stanlos where we have retrograde propagation of that dissection toward the aortic root, causing aortic root dilatation. Okay, so this is going to be a blowing, holodiastolic, decrescendo, early diastolic murmur, how they can describe it. This can cause bounding pulses, head bobbing, okay, wide pulse pressure, big difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure. Blood pressure maybe 120 over 40, 160 over 50. You're like, wow, that's a big difference between the two blood pressures, okay? That's because blood is quickly falling slash collapsing out of the arterial circulation, back out of the aorta, back into the left ventricle. So we have a collapse of that diastolic pressure. We can occasionally get bounding pulses more rarely in other things like a PDA or AV fistulae. But for uh, US simile, you need to know... Uh, this refers to aortic regurgitation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, holostolic murmur, wrong fucking answer. So could refer to numerous things, mitral, tricusp, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid regurg, they'll tell you, holostolic murmur that increases with inspiration because on the right side of the heart. Uh, holostolic murmur could also, and also tricuspid regurg, you need to know, uh, most common cause in U.S. is pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. I made many clips on that stuff, but it's just a very high point to mention. Holosystolic murmur could also be a ventricular septal defect. They can say holosystolic murmur at the left sternal border, holosystolic murmur at the lower left sternal border. doesn't matter. Students get fanatical about the exact location. U.S. simile tends to have flexibility in how it uh, presents locations for murmurs and questions. And also uh, the, the notion of uh, radiating murmurs. Mitral regurg, they don't often say that it radiates them to the axilla. They don't have to say that. So if this were a VSD, so let's look at the diagram here, okay? It can be very fucking confusing, but let's just look at the diagram real quick. If we look at the right atrium, we have 85% for our oxygen concentration. Probably should have fucking said that, okay? In terms of some of you are like, well, what are these percentages referring to? It's oxygen concentration, all right? So... We've got an 85% in the right atrium. We've got an 85% in the right ventricle. That makes sense that we don't have a VSD. Because if there were a VSD, we'd have a left to right shunt across the interventricular septum where you'd have oxygenated blood from the left ventricle entering the right ventricle. So we would have a step up in oxygen concentration from the right atrium to the right ventricle if this were VSD. We'd have an 85% here and then all of a sudden, it's 92% in the right ventricle. And I'd say, is that, I'd say to the student, is, does that sound normal to you? Is that possible? And they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, well, how would we oxygenate blood going from the right atrium to the right ventricle? That makes no fucking sense. So the only way it's possible is if you had a VSD that's allowing for oxygenated blood to come from the left side of heart to the right side of heart. So you need to know that's a possibility. They can show you a diagram like that. I have that on my cardio PDF. It's on the NBME exams. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, no change in A2, P2 split with respiration. Slightly unusual answer choice refers to fixed splitting of S2. Correct answer, okay? They don't have to say why, fixed wide splitting of S2. Wide splitting means right ventricular hypertrophy, okay? They're in a neonate, you're not going to have right ventricular hypertrophy already. It's too soon, all right? But fixed splitting of S2 is high yield for ASD. This is an ASD in this question. Atrial septal defect could be patent foramen ovale, all right? So... Look at the diagram. We've got an, an oxygen concentration of 73% in the superior vena cava. And then 
it all of a sudden steps up to 85% of the right atrium. Well, how the fuck would that be possible? It's not. There's no way for that to occur. There's no oxygenation that should step up from SVC to the, to the right atrium. So the only way that's happened, presumably, is you've got oxygenated blood from the left atrium that's crossed to left to right shunt um, to the right atrium. It's the only way that's possible. So your point of consolidation, at least for the moment, is if you have a step up of oxygen tension from the, the SVC or the IVC, whichever one they happen to list, if you have a step up in oxygen concentration from the vena cava to the right atrium, that's an ASD. If you've got, in contrast, a step up of oxygen concentration from the right atrium to the right ventricle, that's a VSD, okay? So let's just uh, look at the other answer choices here. Pulsus parvus tardis. And by the way, um, when we talk about fixed splitting of S2, you've got an A2 heart sound and a P2 heart sound, and that can fluctuate with respirations. When we inspire, we increase venous return to the right side of the heart. So you're gonna increase pressure on the right side of the heart. P2 should close slightly later. Okay, it can be a complicated discussion. But if we have a, an ASD present, we constantly have shuttling of blood, which nullifies the effect of respiration. So we don't get a fluctuation of A2P2. It's called a fixed splitting of S2. So let's just go through the final answer choice here. Choice D, pulses parvus tardis, wrong fucking answer, refers to aortic stenosis. Okay, so bicusp aortic valve, high yield, doesn't have to be Turner syndrome, it can be autosomal dominant familial bicuspid valve doesn't have to occur uh, in older age. Some students erroneously think you have a bicuspid valve that you can only get an aortic stenosis if it calcifies in your 40s, 50s. It's fucking wrong. You can have a 16-year-old with familial AD bicuspid aortic valve where there's a, a murmur. Okay, so you can have aortic stenosis at any point in life. It could be uh, earlier impedes. So slow rising pulses, pulses parvus tardis. Uh, for aortic stenosis. It's a mid-systolic murmur, aka crescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur. Contrast that with aortic regurg, as I talked about before, which is bounding pulses, head bobbing, wide pulse pressure. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, to and fromer. Actually, real quick, you should just know for 2CK stuff, uh, syncope angina dyspnea, SAD, uh, that you see with aortic stenosis, and it's an answer on one of the two CK forms that a patient has syncope. And they say like, which the following would be an indication for aortic valve replacement in this patient. And it's essentially a diagnosis of ex or, or a answer choice of exclusion type of thing where the answer is syncope. And you're like, well, I guess that's not good if you have syncope with aortic stenosis, uh, but the other answer choices are wrong. Uh, and you also need to know that if you have a cross-sectional area less than one centimeter squared, you're going to do aortic valve replacement. There's a surgery question where they tell you it's 0 0.8 centimeter squared orifice cross-sectional area. The answer is aortic valve replacement. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice Z, to and from or wrong fucking answer, refers to PDA. Okay, so you can also refer to AV fistulae, but this, is con this means a continuous murmur. Okay, continuous machinery-like murmur. This shows up on offline NBME 6 for 2CK. Every fucking student says, what the fuck, when they see this, okay? Because the question rides on you knowing to and fro means continuous murmur in order to get the question right. Okay, they just say like, kid has a to and fro murmur, what's the answer? And it's PDA, all right? So PDA, classically, congenital rubella syndrome, torch infection, okay? You need to know that. I ask students, I'm like, who gets PDA? They're like a neonate. I'm like, no fucking shit. I'm like, but like who? Like which torch infect? which torch is infection? It's congenital rubella. Okay, so you have uh, the ductus arteriosus, which connects the descending aortic arch to the proximal pulmonary trunk slash pulmonary arterial system. And you can close it with endomethacin NSAID. You can keep it open with prostaglandin. In theory, if we had a PDA, we would have a step up in oxygen tension from the right ventricle to, to the pulmonary artery. Couldn't we? I have that in my cardio PDF as well. Okay, because as we said, a proximal, uh, or sorry, the descending aortic arch to the proximal uh, uh, pulmonary arterial system. So we shouldn't normally have a step up in oxygen tension from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. We shouldn't have that. So if that were to occur in this type of diagram, that could be a PDA. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.